Good morning. Good morning. It's, it's so nice to see so much red, but I was talking with Ernest, he said, he said you know, we said, everyone's wearing USC colors today. <laughs> no. Or Oklahoma, or there's a whole bunch of teams. There we go. Okay, anyway. Um, we begin this morning in our worship with our, our uh, Thanksgiving for baptism. So uh, as stand as you're able and turn toward the baptismal font as we begin on this Reformation Sunday. <coughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took the light. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise for Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. I invite you to wave to people as you turn around toward the front, say good morning to people just standing where you are. And uh, we begin with our gathering song for this morning, and that is Majesty.
pray that it's good to be with us all together here for this Reformation. And, and I have to tell you is, is that we were a little nervous singing that because um, Mary Ann, your, Mary Ann, that's, this is your, your nephew? Yes. He's here from Germany. Yes. And he came just to hear that song, right? Yeah. He did. So anyway, so and how do you pronounce his name again? Jürgen. Jürgen. Jürgen is here from Germany. So just wait. And just, it's good to have you here. Okay, there we go. Okay, all right. Jürgen is here. So thanks for being here. So so I, I think he gets the award for coming the farthest for worship. Is that <laughs> Okay, good. Uh, you said he was from Bavaria. I said, Southern Germany. He was just, oh, good, I got that right. Thank you. Um, well, today is Time of the Family of God, and it's interesting because we have a, uh, if you, why don't you go ahead and put the picture up there. Um, there we go. So that's Donnie. But I want to tell you about, and this tortoise doesn't have a name, but this week um, we were visited here on Wednesday with a tortoise. And I don't know for those of you on Facebook, but um, this tortoise was about... Those are about, about so big. <laughs> Probably weigh, your guess it would be over maybe 100 pounds? Oh, 113. 113 pounds. Huge. I've never seen a tortoise that big. So he came over here because he found out that we were making sack lunches. <laughs> and said, wait a minute, I'm here for the carrots and the apples. And so we fed him the carrots and apples, and fortunately, uh, the, the owner did come, and he lives right over here somewhere. But I've never seen a tortoise that big. So we have a miniature version of that tortoise, and this is Donnie. And Kristen, why don't you tell us about Donnie? Okay, so Donnie is our, was our turtle. He um, is actually now at a turtle sanctuary. Um, he just got to be, turtles are really stinky, so he got to be kind of stinky, so we just decided to take him to a, a sanctuary. Um, in this picture, he is about four. Um, he's about five now. He's been at that sanctuary for about a year. Okay. Just curious, where did the name Donnie come from? So, my brother had named him Turtle, and I said, you can't name your turtle Turtle. So, I had named him Donnie after Donatello from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, uh, and here I thought it was Donnie Osmond. <laughs> so close, so close. Well, in our family, um, we had cats, and my sister used to name the cats. And so our cats were Kitty. And then when they got bigger, the name was Big Kitty. <laughs> Never got the cat, but just Big Kitty. Yeah, so, so I always like to know where the names come from. Well, thank you for sharing, Donnie. And so now, where is this Turtle Sanctuary at? I'm just curious. Um, it's actually a friend of my mom's that worked at the school she worked at, and I believe it's in heaven somewhere. Okay. So, so I know that Donnie has since made um, little baby turtles, because he's a little red-eared slider turtle, so okay. he doesn't get much bigger than, you know. But not as big as the one that visited us. No, <laughs> but he does have um, more Lots of tortoise, turtles yeah. And we put the word out about the tortoise, and it was kind of, and Kathy told us that about five people said, you know, well, if no one else wants it, I'll take it. And some of them said, no, that's my, my turtle. And we said, well, it's a tortoise. We know it's not yours now. <laughs> and the right gentleman found out and got back to the village there. So uh, wonderful stories of creation are animal. So let's pray. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of this day. Thank you for the chance to come and gather and worship on this Reformation. Remember that we are saved by grace. And so we thank you that you have graced us with animals and pets and creation itself. And help us to be good stewards of these special gifts that you have given to all of us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us now sing ancient words as we prepare for the reading of our lessons. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. The 
first reading from Romans chapter 3, verses 19 through 28. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds described by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by His grace as a gift. Through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, whom God put forward as a sacrifice, of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance he has passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works. No, but taught by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. <coughs> and let us welcome uh, the gospel this morning together with our gospel acclamation. Alleluia. If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Hallelujah. Our Holy Gospel this morning comes to us from the Gospel of St. Luke, the 19th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass by that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So Zacchaeus hurried down and was happy to welcome Jesus. All who saw it began to grumble and say, He's gone to be the guest of the one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us center our hearts and minds with our centered prayer as we enter into God's word for this morning. Alleluia, Lord, for your hand, Jesus. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Sunday school days, and you can sing along with me. 
Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he. He climbed up in the sycamore tree, for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the master passed that way, he looked up in the tree, and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house today. For I'm going to your house today. Gold stars following. <laughs> and you get to come back next week, too. It's so fun when I sing them with preschoolers because they do two things, and even if they just heard the song, they make Zacchaeus about this big. <laughs> Zacchaeus was a little man, he's about this big. He's and little. then the next part they do is when Jesus shouts at Zacchaeus, You come down! They love to say it like that. They just like, oh my goodness, calm down. <laughs> well, this is a familiar story, but as always, the more we kind of pick at it and look at it, there's so much more that as peeling back the onion, you might say. There's more and there's more and the more. First of all, we have to start out with that Jesus entered Jericho. Okay. So this is, um, Jericho is uh, about 10 miles east of uh, Jerusalem. Um, we were fortunate that when we went to the Holy Land, we were able to go to Jericho. It's one of those places that sometimes you don't make it there because of the walls and everything else that's going on today. So Jesus entered Jericho. Now, what do you know about Jericho? Well, yes, thank you very much. Is that if you're in Sunday school lessons, you remember that the people of Israel marched around the wall how many times? Seven, seven. seven times. They blew the trumpets and the walls came. Tumbling down. down. See, that's a whole other song. We'll that's right. <laughs> And so the walls come tumbling down. Jesus entered Jericho because the walls need to tumble down. And it's going to happen again in the story. Jesus is added again. God's added again. The walls are going to start crumbling down here. Zacchaeus. What do we know about Zacchaeus? Well, some very important things there. He was a tax collector. Even more than that, he was a chief tax collector. Which means the only friends that he had were the Romans. And that's how he got to that position. And the more I think about it, the more I think Zacchaeus' family, I think they come from a family of tax collectors. Why do I say that? Well, because Luke goes out of the way to tell us that Zacchaeus was short in stature. A dwarf, miniature person. And you can just start to think about that for just a minute. What does that mean? Well, first of all, it means that most of the people in Jesus' day probably would look down on Zacchaeus. Both of us. But they looked down on him because he was shorter than everyone else. He was a dwarf, you might say. And people looked down on him because they considered him to be a sinner because of what he was and how tall he was. You must have done something wrong. We've heard the story many times. Either you did something wrong or your parents did something wrong, but there is something wrong with you because you are not as tall as everyone else. You see, the walls got put up around Zacchaeus. Today, walls get put up around all kinds of people. There's all kinds of people that are outside the church because they're not welcome. Because the church says, no, we really don't want you. Racial barriers are set up. Ethnic barriers are set up. Barriers between those people that are LGBTQ are set up. And they continue to say that you're not welcome here. But Jesus came, committed to grace, and said these walls must fall down. So here's the key. Short in stature, a chief tax collector, hated by everyone except for the Romans. Seen as a sinner, but he knows something about Jesus. Because when he hears that Jesus is coming to town, he wants to see him. And of course, everyone in the crowd says, oh, Zacchaeus, just come right up front there because it's hard for you to see, right? No. As he tries to inch his way forward, he's getting elbows. And it will probably hit him right in the head. And he was pushed back. So the only recourse he has is to climb the tree. He says, I gotta see Jesus. I wanna see Jesus. And he goes, he climbs that tree. And no one is helping him. The picture there is kind of, I found this picture and I found it was very fascinating because Zacchaeus is, he's very dressed nicely because he's so rich. There's other people up in the tree, but they're not dressed as nicely as Zacchaeus is. 
So Zacchaeus is up in that tree, and Jesus walks by. And Jesus goes right up to where Zacchaeus was. This is a wonderful story because it, it, in Luke's gospel, Luke is always telling us that Jesus is concerned about the one. The one. 99 sheep, 100 sheep. Jesus says, what about the one? The woman that lost the one coin out of 10 coins. Concerned about the one. Jesus, really, look at this very closely. Jesus goes out of his way to go to Jericho because of the one. Because of Zacchaeus. That's why he's there. Because honestly, what takes place after this is Jesus tells a couple of parables and then he goes home and he rests and Palm Sunday comes up very, very quickly here. It's kind of interesting there. So Jesus goes towards where Zacchaeus is and he looks right at him. And Jesus says, I must. Not can I or is it okay? No, I must go to your house today. It's an imperative. I am here to see you, Zacchaeus. I must. Jesus says that a couple other times, but he says the Son of Man must go to Jerusalem and be crucified and die and rise again. That imperative, Jesus doesn't use it very often, but he's using it here. I must make a home with you. I must go to your house. And Jesus, it just reminds us that Jesus makes a home with us. That Jesus is concerned about us. The one that dwells within us. That's what it says in the Gospel of John at the beginning. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Made a home with us. So Jesus goes out of his way seeking the one Zacchaeus and goes all the way to Jericho. It's interesting as I looked at the story again. So many times when I, when I looked at the story, I, I really had this picture. And I don't know why I had this picture. But I had that picture that, that that conversation between Zacchaeus and Jesus took place at Zacchaeus' house. I don't know why I thought that, but I always thought that. That, that happened at Zacchaeus' house when they had this conversation about I'm going to give money and all this sort of stuff. But it doesn't. Because what it says there is it takes place right in the middle of the road. It takes place right there because it says that, that Zacchaeus stopped where he was. He climbed out from there and stopped exactly where he was, right in the middle of the road. Right in the middle of the town. Right in the middle of life. This is where it takes place. Luke gives us that picture, not at the home of Zacchaeus, but there in the middle of the road. Something is going on here. Jesus, in the midst of life, tells many, many stories. He tells us about the parables of the ten pounds and doing what, doing what we're doing with what was given to us. That happens right afterwards in every one of Palm Sunday. It's interesting as I was thinking about this and peeling back the onion a little bit about this story here. It's in John's Gospel, right before Palm Sunday, uh, Jesus is raising Lazarus. And you're going to hear about that next week. Pastor Ken's going to preach about that next week. The raising of Lazarus. But today we have the raising of Zacchaeus. Luke puts it right before Palm Sunday. John talks about the raising of Lazarus. Luke talks about the raising of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus is raised up. Zacchaeus is given new life. Grace has come to the house. Grace has come to his house. Grace has come to him. Life is transformed for Zacchaeus. His priorities change all of a sudden. He becomes a giver instead of a taker. And he's going to start to share his resources with the poor. That's what he says. Salvation has come to this house. That's what Jesus says. Not because of what Zacchaeus did, but because Jesus was allowed to walk in the door. Because Zacchaeus welcomed Jesus. That's why salvation has come to Zacchaeus. Grace came through the door because of who Jesus is. And Jesus reminded everyone that Zacchaeus 
is a child of God. Imagine what that must have meant for Zacchaeus at that time. Because he was always pushed out. The walls were always put up. But Jesus comes to him and says, you are a child of God. You're valuable. You're important. And all of a sudden, his whole life changed. Grace. Grace came to Zacchaeus' house, and his relationship with Jesus became a priority in his life. Zacchaeus' generous giving came as a response to the presence of Jesus and the grace of God. It's a response because of God's grace and Jesus' presence. That gracious, generous giving away. Well, today, we remember how God's grace came to a monk in Germany and how he responded to that. And Martin Luther was transformed and how he then transformed the church. Focusing on being saved by grace, as we heard in Romans today. Saved by grace. Zacchaeus was saved by grace. No one else would give him the time of day. No one else would even let him move up to the front of the crowd to see Jesus. No, he was saved by grace that day. Grace is when Jesus comes and seeks us out and says, I must stay at your house. I want to have a relationship with you. I want to be part of your life. That's God's response to us. That's how God treats us. That's how God is committed to grace. Now think about your response to God's grace. We have Zacchaeus' response. Today you'll be making a commitment to grace as you bring forward your commitments for this coming year. And so today we're making that commitment to grace, to help us reach out with grace to those people around us. That's what our commitments are all about. So I want you to think about a minute, just think about what Zacchaeus did. Those of you who have your commitment cards or pledge cards are with you, I just want you to hold on to that for a second. And I want you to think about, because you probably know what that number is that you put on there. For just a minute, I want you to think of giving four times that amount. Whoa, right? That's what Zacchaeus did. Four times. You haven't defrauded anything, but that's what Zacchaeus did. He says, he says if I defraud it, I'm gonna four times. Think about what that number would be of what your giving is gonna be for the next four times that amount. Okay, let's go down just a little bit there. How about two times that amount? Whoa, that's still quite a bit. How about taking it down to a 10% increase? Think about that. Think about what maybe just, you know, $50 more a month might mean. $25 a month. Even just $5 a week, what that would mean. And if I've got this right, let me see. If I say, like, well, let's go $10 a week because I can do my math easier. Okay, Diana, hold me on my math for just a second. <laughs> if it's $10 more a week, um, that's 52 weeks, that's $520, right? Did I get it right? Thank you. Okay. That's just $10 a week. $5 a week. Just think about that for a minute of how God has graced you, how God has blessed you. And think about Zacchaeus' response. I think that we can start to look at, well, you know, maybe I can do just a little bit more. Because I have been blessed by God. And I'm committed to sharing God's grace. Just like Zacchaeus was. Just like the disciples were. Just like Jesus was when he, he jumped upon that cross and died for us. He was committed to grace. He committed to the one. And the one. And the one. And the one. So no matter what that looks like, I just want you to remember that Jesus has come to your home. Jesus wants to make a home with you. Jesus comes to you. And when we respond to that invitation, just like Zacchaeus, our lives are changed. They're transformed. 
We've been shown God's grace through Jesus Christ, and we respond. God is committed to grace, and so are we. So let us truly be committed to grace and to show the world that very important thing that we know is that God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. good. Amen. Uh, let us sing a wonderful sermon hymn, and that is, Lord, speak to us that we may speak. such as the Ukrainian Lutheran Church, use Luther's rose with an Orthodox cross in the center. So it's the same, same rose there, Luther's rose, but it's got a different cross on those for the Orthodox Church. And so that helps us again to remember our uh, siblings in the Ukraine, and especially those of the Ukrainian Lutheran Church. And also, um, we're going to have a moment of silence. Uh, we can talk about violence, and uh, we're going to talk about the, well, the violence, and it was um, just... You know, what happened in Korea there with 160 people dying is it's just, uh, just horrendous. And so we're going to have a moment of silence for that kind of violent period of time for them that the people lost loved ones. So I have that period of silence, and then again we'll focus in on um, our siblings in Ukraine with the Ukrainian prayer.
to stand in your own prayer time with our prayer song. Lord, listen to your children pray.
Hear us, O oh God. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O oh God, asking all of this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to stand and, as much as you are comfortable with, share God's peace with those around. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. 
just tell him that we all sang happy birthday to him and we had cake and just, just keep piling them on ice cream. Just tell him all this stuff. Oh, you really missed it. <laughs> so anyway, but send our greetings because baby is, is something to be excited about. Yeah. Yeah. You're standing there because I'm sure you have another announcement. I think we got another one too, but go ahead. <laughs> Zacchaeus, just a real So, I um, just want to say thank you to all of you uh, being faithful to your church. We are thrilled with your gifts that you have promised here today, and thank you for that. One last thing we are getting ready for our first our congregational meeting in December, and we are looking for those uh, folks out there who might serve on the council. We put uh, descriptions of positions um, on the council in the uh, messenger and talked about it. But we will be reaching out to touch people to ask for those of you who might feel led to volunteer one meeting a month, about an hour or an hour and a half, depending on how chatty we are. Um, and then you have committees that work with you. We will need three new council members this uh, year. So please, if it's something that you think that you can do, uh, check with any of the council members, see myself or pastor. Thank you. Okay. I just thought, we, you know, I, I remember those posters with what Uncle Sam looking at you saying, I want you. <laughs> so we're going to make one that has a picture of Jesus on it. And go, I want you. Okay. All right. Um, just one final thing, and I guess we will do this after our sending song. Which we, should, we should probably do after our sending song. Okay. So there is a free lunch. But. Uh, not me, but someone else said there's a requirement for lunch. And that is that after we sing our final song and after we're dismissed, Memphis, is we want to invite everyone here, especially those that are wearing red, to come up and take a picture, a Reformation picture. It's a family photo time. Yes, that's right. I all love those, right? So so uh, after we finish that and we do this episode, we're going to invite you all up here. We will say our table grace, and then we will all proceed into the uh, fireside room for our luncheon. So there is just, grace goes a long way, but just a little tiny requirement. Just a little, wee little one. We'd like you to come forward for a picture. And so those are all the announcements. And so I just invite you to stand as you're able as we sing our second song, which is Give to Our God Immortal Praise. <laughs> Thanks be to God. God.